Hey, how you doing? Welcome to the show, Last Exit to Brooklyn. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, how you doing? You doing well? Me too. Uh, let's get into it. Let's get into the funny before, we, before I start, uh, you know, subscribe to this and rate and review it and write great reviews and stuff. Some people have been messaging me nice things and requests. So someone messaged me something I'm going to talk about later. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be pretty crazy. <clears throat> um, let's see what, uh, I had a pretty good day today. I did this thing where um, I just, you know, like looked at videos all day of mine. <laughs> I kind of hate to admit that, I, but I, I downloaded this app. It's called um, I get, uh, re, like Face Swap. It's not that. What is it called? Oh, Reface. Reface, where you take your face and you can put it on like famous things. Um, and I, you know, because I saw a guy put a video on TikTok with his face on like Vin Diesel's face. And I was like, Oh, that looks cool. So, you know, I thought I'd try that out and put it in my, you know, my face on like things that I like. And one thing I've noticed basically what that app is, it's just, <clears throat> you uh, put your face on like famous people's faces and you just like look a lot worse than the celebrity does. So just all day, I just kind of started feeling worse about myself. I kept like looking like every time I put my face on someone, I looked like Carl Malden for some reason. It was just like, kind of started to bum me out. So I was like, you know, enough of this. <laughs> I had that moment of like, you know, maybe I should just, you know, find out a way to get um, satisfied with who I am as a person instead of putting my face on uh, other people's faces. <laughs> <clears throat> I think I was bummed that I didn't look like the celebrity. Like, uh, you know, I was like, wait a minute, I don't look like that. But then it makes sense because I'm not them. So it's just my face. And I think it kind of opened up some it kind of um, was very um, <laughs> what, like uh, uh, enlightening. Is that the word where I was like, oh, OK, I think I need to go back to therapy. So I did that for about two hours, unfortunately. It's one, you know, it's one of those things where, like, you know, I just all I think all the time is every night before I go to sleep, I'm like, oh, tomorrow I'm going to get up and I'm going to do this. And then I get it. I don't do any of it. And I'm always like, and I like start from scratch again. Oh, I'm going to do this tomorrow. And then I don't do it. It's basically what life is. Just a bunch of, like, nights where you're like, I, I'm going to do this. And then you just don't do it. I do it sometimes. I don't want to get too down on myself. All right. <clears throat> so... I um I was just watching TV and I thought this was funny. I saw a commercial for um I don't know, I guess it was for pizza or something because it said uh and the tagline was so weird it was like uh it's like hey are you tired of one topping pizza deals and um, I was like no <laughs> what an odd thing to try and get me to be tired of. Are people tired of one topping pizza deals? I didn't know one topping pizza deals. They were acting like it was this thing that was just so ubiquitous and ruining everyone's life. Like there are people out there like, I am sick of pizza deals. What is this? What is, what the fuck? Every time I turn on the TV, there's a new pizza deal They're trying to give me discounts. That is bullshit. I guess their thing was they had more toppings. But I don't understand, like, why do you have to get down on other pizza places giving a one topping deal? Why don't you just say, we have two topping deals? I think it's so funny how they do that in commercials where their um, their gimmick is not just selling what they do, but just how shitty everyone else is. Like, this place is shitty. Look at how shitty it is. You know, and they show a picture of, like, a, a hamburger. Look at this shit. This is like eating diarrhea. You should come here. Our food is good. We're not like those assholes. <clears throat> Commercials are hilarious to me. Mainly because they don't have anything to do with, you know, and now they just have to make many movies to try and get people to remember them. That's the whole thing. So they just, a lot of times they just don't have it. Like there's one, the, uh, the one where it's Chris Paul, but it, it's Alfonso Ribeiro playing Chris Paul, like, as another Chris Paul, and then, but he's, like, a shittier version. 
<clears throat> I think it's like a State Farm commercial. I don't understand, but the whole series is just about like Alfonso Ribeiro is like a shitty Chris Paul or something. First of all, I don't I don't know how they get away with that commercial. It's, I mean, I feel like that that's like when people get mad at that, like it's racist. I don't even want to get into that, but. <laughs> I don't know. I just realized, I think, you know, those commercials have been on for months. I was watching it the other day and I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't even have anything to do with like insurance. It's just I don't, like a funny thing that, you know, Alfonso Ribeiro looks kind of like Chris Paul and is like a shitty version. <clears throat> Fucking tap dance kid. And uh, what was his name? Carlton uh, from that. Yeah. Anyway, I saw another commercial. Um, I love it. You know, I, I, I always make fun of commercials. I, I think it's funny when um, this is the thing I used to say on stage. I, I think I might have done it once. It was about how um, if you're seeing a commercial and like uh, the commercial's like mad at you almost, <laughs> like it's weird because, uh, you know, those commercials where they're talking to the camera, like to you. Um, Another thing, you know, like that happens a lot where in the commercial they're talking to the camera and they like ask you something and then they act like you answered the thing. They'll be like, do you know what did da, 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 da? That's right. You know, and they act like I said like an answer to the commercial. It's like, I didn't say anything. Why are you acting like we're in a conversation? Um, fuck you commercial. No, but there's, there's, there was this one commercial. They acted like they were mad at me. Um, this guy comes on. It's like a razor commercial. He's like, He's like, hey, what, what do you think? Your beard's on vacation? Well, it's not. <laughs> I was like, man, this guy's really had it with me. I'm really annoying him. Like, and first of all, like, where, where did that come? Where did you get the idea that I thought that I came up with that? Like, this guy just came on on the TV and was just mad at me that I was that I was uh, thinking my beard was on vacation. Like, has anyone ever thought that? <laughs> this guy, like thinks that so many people think that he's like he's just had it with the world with everyone thinking that he's like what do you think your beer's on vacation well it's not we have two topping pizza deals today like what this doesn't have anything to do with with life insurance are you tired of one topping pizza deals we'll buy these jeans what commercials are stupid Anyway, so that happened. Walking down the street today, this happened too. It was, um, seems like New York's getting more dangerous. Um, it really does. It feels like there's less people out on the street and there's just like worse people just, and they're a lot more aggressive. I was walking down the street and <clears throat> as I was walking, there was a guy walking towards me. He's a black guy. And, and I'm only saying that cause it comes up later. Um, and, uh, he was he the the whole block was was uh empty and he was he was coming right at me right in my path of where i was walking and uh i was like oh, i'm not gonna try and walk around this guy because you know he's being really aggressive i'm not gonna like act like a, a pussy or something um not like i'm a tough guy but just also i grew up in new york and i think it's very like you have to kind of like you can't show that you're scared or whatever i mean i don't know it wasn't like he but it seemed like he he made an effort to be right in my path and um, he did this thing. This is a thing homeless people do, where, or, or I don't know if you saw, like where they they're asking for change, but they don't ask for money. <clears throat> and then he did this thing that they do sometimes, where um, they won't just ask you; they kind of like try to stop you, like they're they want to like get in a conversation with you, you know? Like so, I was walking, and the guy got close. He was like, "Excuse me, excuse me, sir, excuse me," and I was like, and I'm like. I grew up here and I don't fall for that shit. Like, you know, you can't stop because I don't know. It's just some random guy in the street. It's not going to be, Hey, excuse me. Can I talk to you? Like what? Oh, I, I want to, um, you know, give you some uh, pizza specials. No, like, you know, it's, it's always going to be the same thing, but there, I guess it's a ploy to get you to stop. Cause then when you've stopped, it's kind of like harder for you to turn them down. So he's like, excuse me, sir. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? And I was like, what, what? And he was like, well, I mean, can you stop? And I'm like, no, I, I have to go. What? And he was like, I, I don't want any money. I don't want any money. And I'm like, okay. And I knew, you know, what was coming. I was like, oh, you don't need want any money. What do you want? You just want to hang out or something? Um, and he's like, no, I, I, I want you to uh, buy water for me. 
Um, that's in the, but that's like an interesting tactic I've seen where they're like, I don't want money. And then you're like, what? And they're like, can you, I, I want, I want water. I want food. And you're like, well, why don't you go get food? And they're like, no, I don't have any money. And I'm like, so you do want money. So, what you, so not only, so, so you don't want money. You want me to go run errands for you and pay for it. Um, so the guy was like, I, I want water. And I guess I had a bottle of water in my hand and I was like, yeah okay sorry you know like i just kind of kept walking because i don't really i guess he wanted my water i mean but i had just bought the water i'm not just going to give him water. so but you know he was trying to act like it wasn't like a homeless asking for things I, hey i don't want money hey can, can you just give me the thing that you have you know the stuff you bought give that to me and i go no no yeah no and i kept walking he goes you fucking racist and I was, I just kept, that's happened to me a couple of times where I don't give them what they want and they say I'm racist. And it's like, yeah, I'm racist. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm racist because I don't want to give you stuff that I don't know you. Like I went and bought this. Like, yes, it's because of your race that I'm not just handing a stranger the things, my, uh, my items and my possessions. It has nothing to do with I paid for it and, and you're just a person walk, who just aggressively walked up to me on the street. You know? <laughs> it's because you're, if you're a white guy, I totally would have just given you everything I had. That's how the world operates. Just such a bad comeback. <laughs> Racist. Yeah, and I just kept walking. I mean, what are you going to do? I, I guess he was trying to bait me. So I, I am not racist. Here you go. Here's all my stuff. Here's my house. I showed that guy. Um, another guy did that to me. He was like selling things he drew on the street. And he was like, you want to buy this drawing? I was like, no. And he was like, racist. And I was like, I'm, oh yeah, because I don't want to buy drawings. It's like, no, it's because you're crazy and you're just selling drawings on the street. You're right. It, I, I, it's because I'm racist that I don't want to buy uh uh, shitty drawings from crazy people has nothing to do with your drawings are aw awful. <laughs> do you want to buy these awful drawings? No, you racist. Um, I come home with like eight horrible, horrible paintings. They weren't even paintings. They were just drawings. <clears throat> person i live with is like wait why do you have all those drawings oh because i'm not racist yeah i had to prove to this guy that I wasn't racist so i spent a hundred dollars on his horrible drawings these are just stick figures i know i know but you know it's a matter of principle i had to prove to him <clears throat> that uh yeah i'm like did you get my water no i didn't i gave it to another guy because he said i was racist for not giving it to him um See how I brought that around? That's brilliant. I was um, watching the uh, basketball playoffs. Um, Miami Heat were playing. I was thinking, it was funny because I was thinking, uh, you know, the Heat, that's kind of a lazy name. But I mean, I guess it's a pretty good name because it's like, oh, we're like, it's hot in Miami. And we're like on fire. <clears throat> but I was thinking like, it's funny when, you know, you can only get away with certain kinds of temperature, naming a team after it. You can only get away with with uh, certain ones. There's other temperatures that just wouldn't be a good name for, a, like, a sports team like that. Like, give it up for the New Jersey Mild Winds. Yeah. <laughs> They're playing the Georgia Chance of Rains. And the Alaska Cold Fronts are playing tomorrow. Man, these are bad names. These temperatures do not make sense. Chance of rain. I think it's so funny when the weathermen say that. Such a um, vague uh, weather prediction. Here's the weather. Yeah, it might rain tomorrow. It might not. There's a chance. Can you just say that every day and get away with it? Chance of rain. You're, you're safe either way. It didn't rain today. Yeah, I said there was a chance. They don't do that with others with other news. There's a chance someone got murdered today. I don't I don't know what happened. They, there's a good chance though, because a lot of people are getting murdered. So 
wow, you're bad at the news. Um, so yeah, that was, that was, that was one thing I thought was funny. Uh, yeah. Last time, uh, I think I was talking about when I did this, I was talking about the Oscars, um, and something else occurred to me because I was talking about how when they give the uh, last time about uh, when they give the Oscars to dead people, that's always like a big thing. You know, like if, if someone dies and they're nominated, um, they, you know, they have to give it to them because it would be rude to just not give it to a dead person, even though they can't really appreciate it at all. Um, but then I was thinking like, you know, if they always give it to the dead person, imagine if there was a year where like uh, they nominated all these people and they all died. So there was like five people up for best supporting actor and they, they were all dead. Then how do you, how do you choose who gets it? I guess you would have to go back to town, like how good it was. That would be the only way it was fair. Or it'd be like a five way tie. Like, all right, they all get it because they're dead. Jeez, this was a tough year. Five great actors in smaller parts died within two months of being nominated. This is the worst Oscars ever. I was watching it one year and like, cause they always give the Oscars to people for like weird reasons. They never give it for like, you know, them being good. I mean, usually, I mean, sometimes they do, but usually it's not because they're good. Um, but um, there was one year where uh, Jamie Foxx won for Ray. And I mean, he was good and everything, but like, uh, I remember he made some big, he, you know, there was a big thing like his grandmother had died and he was really close with his grandmother and he made his whole speech about his grandmother. And I remember um, afterwards they were interviewing Oprah and, you know, uh, talking about if she was happy for Jamie Foxx, which I mean, what, what are you going to say in those? <laughs> You're at the after Oscars party. Are you happy for Jamie Foxx? No, I'm pissed off. He's a dick. He shouldn't have won. He's not good. He's not even dead. What's That's bullshit. Um, but she was like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio was up for that, for, for the aviator that year. And she was like, look, you know, Leo was good. I love Leo, you know, and he was great, but you know, you can't beat a dead grandmother. So I'm glad Jamie won. I just thought that was such a funny comment. You can't beat a dead grand. Oh, really? I didn't know this was a dead grandmother contest. Really? <laughs> like you can't say that. And it was basically just kind of um, putting into words exactly, you know, why he had gotten the Oscar. Um, I said, like, you know, so so Leonardo DiCaprio shouldn't shouldn't win because his grandmother's healthy. <laughs> yeah, too bad, buddy. Maybe you should uh, maybe you should poison your grandmother next time. Is that is that what happened when he finally won? Did he poison his grandmother? All right, fine, we'll give it to you. This is all about dead relatives. Welcome to the, uh, whoever has the, what if, um, imagine if like someone was up for an Oscar and then, um, imagine if someone was up for an Oscar and then at the ceremony they died like while they were reading the, um, the category. <laughs> They'd have to give it to that guy. Like, Okay, and the Oscar goes to, um, well, that guy just died right now. I, as I'm looking at the audience, he was just uh, stabbed to death by his agent. So I guess we got to, I guess we got to give it to, um, I'm trying to think of someone. <laughs> I guess we got to give it to Rip Torn instead of Daniel Day-Lewis. Sorry, Daniel, your name's on here, but that guy just died right now. And, you know, it would be wrong to uh, just be weird if we gave it to you and while he's dying or, you know, he literally just died. I don't know if Rip Torn is even alive anymore. I, I thought Rip Torn was a funny one. Charles Grodin, is he alive? That'd be a funny one. We're going to give it to Charles. I was trying to think of someone like who would be way worse than Daniel Day-Lewis. And I, uh, I've gotten in a lot of conversations about actors and it, the consensus is always that Rip Torn is worse than Daniel Day-Lewis because Daniel Day-Lewis is always going to win if he's up for it because he's like crazy and always just becomes the guy. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. So yeah, there, there was that about the Oscars that I thought was hilarious and I said it. 
Um, I've been watching a lot of news, you know, but I've been trying not to because it like pisses me off. Oh, this is another thing I wanted to say before the, me being mad about the news. I was watching a movie the other day, um, and it was a it was you know a good movie. It was a Tarantino, actually, yeah, it was a Tarantino movie, and um, and it was good. Like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I like it, but it, it's really long, and a lot of Tarantino's movies are long. And there's this thing that I've realized with movies where. I feel like, um, cause I don't understand why they don't like shorten movies a lot. Like some, some filmmakers make movies really long all the time. And it, it used to really be true. Like, I, I think like if, if a movie's long, I think people think it's a good movie just because it's long. Like I remember as a kid, if I ever saw a movie, like I remember like the deer hunter was on when I was really little and it was really long. And I remember just being like, wow, this must be really good. Cause like, it's so long. So I always like equated a movie being good with the length of the movie. I think there's a kind of a, um, um, an idea that like, if, if you, if you have a movie short and concise, there's no way it can be good. Like, Oh, this is shit. It's only like 90 minutes long. It can't be good. But it's like, maybe they just were good at editing the movie, you know, like, but, you know, another guy was like, oh, well, this guy didn't cut anything. It's three and a half hours long. This is the greatest. I just remember when I was young, those are the movies that always won. The ones that were like three and a half hours long. The ones that were so boring and you would never want to watch. Like, and I, I, I do think people think that. I think it kind of tricks people into thinking like, well, this is boring and long. It must be really good because I don't know, like kind of like a book, you know, oh my God, look how long this is. And it's boring. And this must be really good. I just, I guess I just don't get it. That's another thing. Like there's a lot of movies that I think are really bad, but people would like are afraid to admit that they're bad because they, then they would look stupid. I, I feel like a lot of, um, what's, what's that guy's name? Uh, Wes Anderson movies are like that where they're very like, I think a lot of people don't like a lot of those movies, but it's like, you can't say you don't like it because people are going to, well, what are you, what are you stupid? <laughs> Well, you don't like that movie? What, look, look how long it is. It doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah, no, I didn't. I just didn't like it because the plot didn't make, didn't go anywhere. And, you know, it just kept going. I know. That's why it's so good. You just don't get it. It's like, no, I, I don't know. Maybe I don't get it. But maybe he should have just made a movie that I could get that's easier. Well, you know, you're just not going to, you know, you just don't understand good art. It has to be long and you have to hate it and it doesn't go anywhere. Oh, really? Well, if that's what great art is, then this is the greatest movie I've ever seen. I think there's a lot to be said for, like Judd Apatow does that a lot. He makes his movies are really long. And I, I don't understand. They're always like two and a half hours long. I don't understand why he can't get someone in there to be like, dude, just cut like 20 minutes out of this movie and it'll be, it'll be better because he's good. His movies are good, but he, I think he gets wrapped up in that. We're like, no, no one can, this is my vision and it has to be this long. We can't tell this story of, a woman who has sex with a lot of dudes, it, you know, this has to be like an epic. And I do think, like I said, I think there's something to be said. I, I think people think those movie, his movies are better, you know, or beyond just like a, a light comedy because they're long, you know, I don't know. Like, I think the movie Stripes is really funny. It's only, it's only, well, actually I think Stripes is kind of long. I think it's like an hour and it's probably almost two hours, but you can do it. You can make a short, good movie and I kind of prefer them short you know because I got a lot of shit to do I gotta you know download these apps where you I put my face on famous people and you know and then I gotta watch commercials and you know shit on them for how stupid they are but I, I think that that's a thing that no one really is even cognizant of like oh man this is so good oh, look how long it is oh it's so good they're like beating me over the head with this for three and a half hours. I'm just going to make this like awful movie and it's going to be nine hours long. This is the greatest movie I've ever seen. I couldn't even get through it. That's how good it is. It just kept going. <laughs> it wouldn't stop. He stayed, he stayed in his vision. Um, what else do I have here? I talked about that. I, uh, yeah. Hanging out with my friend the other day. This is the thing I thought was funny. Uh, 
I was saying to another friend, this is a, bit, a big thing people say after you hang out. Uh, I don't know if you noticed this. Uh, like after we hang out, the guy goes, hey, man, good hang, man. Good hang. That kind of a, that's kind of a, a known saying or it's kind of like, again, ubiquitous. Hey, good hanging. You know? It's weird that people say that. Because like, w- what does that mean exactly? You're complimenting hanging out. Hey, man, you're really good at smoking weed and talking about chicks. Yeah. Yeah, good job at that. That was good how we sat there and uh, and drank and uh, and talked about uh, Bruce Willis movies. People don't do that after other things, like after you go to eat with them. You know, you hey, good eating, man. Good good eat session. You're good. At, you're really good at that. Good watching TV, man. You nailed it. The way you you looked at the TV and made jokes about it. Yeah. Like people compliment everything that happens. I feel like that's like really positive. Do that. I wish that really positive people do that. Compliment everything. Good hang, man. Good hanging out. You're really good at it. I wish I was that positive. Someone hits my car. Hey, good car accident, man. That was good. I really like the way you uh, rammed into the side of my car and ruined it. Yeah. Good, um, good fight, dude. Or uh, something else funny. Hey, good sleeping. Good sleeping, buddy. You're really good. <laughs> Your friend just complimenting you on you sleeping. Um, yeah, it was hilarious. But yeah, it was funny when the guy said that. It was, um, uh, I think last time I was talking about, uh, you know, I was watching sports again. They don't have, you know, people in, you know, in the state in the arena or the stadium there. And I, you know, I think some players were saying they like it cause it's a lot easier to play without people yelling at you and how, um, you know, yeah, just how much, it must be so much easier to do your job. And then I was saying how like in sports, it's just weird how like you're allowed, you know, strangers are just allowed to go and yell at you and try and mess you up while you're doing your job. And I was talking to people about that and they're like, well, I mean, you know, it's entertainment, you know, anything goes, but I mean, that's not, that doesn't go in other forms of entertainment. Like if you went to a Broadway show, you know, they don't just like heckle the people in the play if they're not, you know, if they don't like them, you know, like, uh, uh, Meryl, Jessica Lang is, you know, doing like Tennessee Williams or something. And someone's like, you're not good. <laughs> You just start waving like things to for her to mess up her lines. Like, you're not a good actress. I like that other actress better. She's better than you. I hope she out acts you. You know, again, going back to the Oscars, it's you know, it's sports and all that stuff. You it's you're allowed to like boo when the other people uh do well or something. And you know, the Oscars, it's like you're no one's ever honest. It's always like, you know, if someone wins. Everyone has to be like, oh, that's great, you know, but there's no way everyone wanted them to win. But you can't just like, I think it'd be funny if people just booed at the, oh, boo, you suck. You shouldn't have won, like during their speech. I'd like to thank the, hey, you shouldn't have won. Hey, shut up. All right, I won. All right. I just think it's so funny people boo anything. <laughs> like, I don't like things. I don't like boo it. I just don't say anything. Um, I also think it's funny at the Oscars when they when the winner cry. The winner always well not always, but they cry a lot. Oh my god, like they're so happy. But the the losers can they never cry. They're not they're not allowed to cry if if you lose. But those are the ones that should be crying. They probably feel the worst. It must piss them off. Like they want to cry and then the winner's crying. Oh my god. It's like they must be like, the fuck are you crying for? You you won, asshole. I do think that's funny when people cry because they're happy. I mean, I guess I've done that too, but it's you know, that must be a nice life where you like, you cry a lot just from good things happening in your life. I don't have that in my life. I'm not like crying myself to sleep at night because things are going so well. Tom, what are you, what are you crying about? Oh, just, you know, I keep winning things. It's just, you know, making me feel bad. (laughs) People are uh, walking by my room. Man, he's been crying all week. Man, he must things must be going great for him. How many how many Oscars has he won today this week? <laughs> I'm too busy crying about the bad thing. I think that's how most people live their lives. They're 
they're not like crying because things are so good. I do kind of get like teary if I'm mad, if I'm really mad, which kind of comes off badly if you're like really in a fight with someone and you're kind of like mad at them and you're saying things and then you kind of almost start crying. That kind of like takes away your power. Like, like, man, this guy's really mad at me, but he's like crying. Are you, are you sad or are you mad? What's, what's going on? I don't know. I'm sad and mad. <laughs> I was going to fight him, but now I feel like giving him a hug. I uh, was talking to my friend the other day, the guy I grew up with, uh, we were talking about, um, it's funny when you see people you grew up with because they remember all the like the pivotal stories about your childhood and no one else knows about. And I, we were talking about how um, we grew up in the 80s in New York City and you know I was really into movies. And when I was growing up here, um, a thing I found out later on, there were, you know, there were just a lot of like predators around because it was so much more dangerous here. And you know that, you know, the thing when, we were growing up and there would always be kind of like a creepy guy around, like maybe like a coach or something. And he was always kind of weird. And you, you know, he was maybe being too touchy feely with people. I like, I never really, you know, um, saw much of that. I, I, I almost feel like these really creepy, almost like borderline pedophilia type guys, like, I don't know, stayed away from me maybe cause they thought I was too, I was very like, um, I was kind of sheltered and I, I was very wary of everybody young. So maybe they could like pick up on that. I don't know, this is like a weird thing, but I just like, it was, it, it, it reminded me that I would see dudes like that around. And then it, it was weird because this is how insecure I am. I almost started to feel like question myself, like looking back, I'm like, well, how come none of these guys, how come none of those guys are ever like targeting me? Like, what, what, what was I not good looking enough? Like what's going on? I thought I was a pretty good looking kid. And what's, not, what's also funny is I remembered when I was a kid, I would always try to see R-rated movies when I was really young. And so me and my friend or my friends, we would we couldn't get an R-rated movie. So we would go up to just like adults on the line. A lot of times they were like men. We would just go up to grown men and be like, hey, can we like pretend we're like, like that we're with you to get into the movie? And um, it's just funny. Like <laughs> that's how different my childhood was where like, you know, when you're a kid, usually I tell you like, hey, stay away from strangers. Don't engage strangers if they try to talk to you or they try to give you anything like, you know, run away. But I was actually like going up and engaging grown men. <laughs> you know, it's like, they must have thought it was like a sting. It, that, I was just thinking it was amazing. I was never, no one ever like tried to molest me or anything because it's like, not only was it everywhere, you know, when I, I found out later, but I'm actually going, I'm actually engaging strangers on the street. <laughs> They must have thought it was some like sting operation. Like, hey, what's up? You know, and I'm literally going up to grown men. I'm like, hey, can I pretend I'm your kid? <laughs> you know, like, being like, whoa, 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 what the hell's going on here? Just like some 10 year old boy is like asking if he can be my son, and, like hang out with me, go to a movie with me. Hello, sir. I saw you standing here. I'm 10 years old, me and my 10 year old friend. And we saw that you're 35. We were wondering, can we hang out with you in a movie in a dark room with strangers? Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Like maybe I, maybe we, you know, it was just kind of like the luck of the draw, you know. We, I, that, uh, not, like I said, maybe it was because we were so forward. Maybe that's why they never. They were just like, yeah, this can't be this kid. Something's going on here. There must be a hidden. This must be like a hidden camera prank show. Like uh, what, what's what's the name of that? The uh, Chris Matthews Oh, to catch a predator. Yeah, I remember that was a great show to catch a predator. Um, that show was like uh, the show. That show to catch a predator was kind of like punked, but the the total opposite way. Where because like a punk, it would always be like a horrible thing, and then um, uh, Ash and Kutcher would jump out and they'd find out it was just a show and they'd be like so relieved. Oh, thank God. Oh, I'm not really, um, <laughs> you, know, I don't, you know, I'm not really being evicted from my house or something. I don't know, something, whatever, whatever the joke was. Uh, but to catch a predator was the opposite where they'd be like, all right, I'm going to go and try and have sex with this kid. Oh, wait, I'm on TV. Oh, my life is ruined. Oh, man. Like when they, when they found out it was a TV show, uh, that was the bad news. That was probably the pitch. They were like, 
I have a great show. It's like a hidden camera show, but it's the complete opposite of punk. When they find out it's it's t- that it's a TV show. Imagine how bad that that must have been because it's like, you know, at first they you know they'd go. They thought they were like gonna meet some young kid or something and try and sleep with them, and then Chris Matthews would come out and like kind of bust them, and then you could tell they're really uncomfortable. But then, like, when a camera crew would show, and then they'd be like, "Hey, by the way, this is like the biggest TV show in the world. Yeah, you're you're gonna be on it. Like, oh, okay." And then they would just leave. <laughs> like, what are you gonna do, just go to your house now? <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna go home now. Yeah, when is this airing? Next week? Okay, yeah, I have a week until my life is ruined. How do you ever like come back from that? Then I remember watching that show, and there was a guy who kept being on the show. Like he he was on it, and he got busted, and then he was on it again, like a week later. Like man, that's that's when you know you got a problem. Like man, I just keep being on this show that busts me for being a pedophile. Um, yeah, I just thought that was I thought that was really hilarious. Uh. What what else did I want to talk about? Uh, there was that, and uh, that was hilarious. Um, oh, I was watching the news. Uh, I'll get back to this, and you know, there's all this, obviously, all this shit going on, and uh, it's funny they keep asking, you know, because a lot of people are protesting these, you know, police shootings, and it's kind of getting more attention. You know, the whole Black Lives Matter. Whenever you watch sports, everyone has like a Black Lives Matter shirt on, and um, it's getting a lot of attention. And um, I started realizing, like, you know, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, there's no systemic racism in America. You know, it just is kind of an amazing thing that people really think that. Um, but I had a realization the other day, like, this is like how racist our society is. Like, it's it's so racist. It's so deeply ingrained in our society, the racism, that um, uh, one thing I noticed, like, I've, I've actually, I've been praised a number of times in my life for not being racist. Like, people have, said that to me like it's an accomplishment like like <laughs> that's how bad it is that like me not being racist people are like impressed by like wow man you're you don't hate jews that's amazing good for you buddy how did you do that you're a better man than me the way you're not right ra- but like that's how how much racism is a part of our society that it's kind of like a uh, an attribute that people will notice in me. Man, that is great. Have you met Tom? Yeah, he's not racist. Can you believe it? I don't know what I don't know what happened to him. It's weird. Because everyone is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I did it, man. Good hang, buddy. Yeah, that was a that was a callback to that. Um Another thing, yeah, I've been watching, you know, you know, obviously I don't like Trump, but I'm trying to not watch it as much. But what, one thing I'm always talking about is I don't understand the, you know, I, I understand like, like, you know, if you, if you, I understand if you did like Trump and then, you know, with all the shit that's happened being like, oh, okay, I didn't know he was this bad. And, but it's weird how like, once people make a decision for something they, that they like or really into, they just, no matter what happens, they never stop supporting it no matter no matter what and that's kind of what it is it's weird with with him but it, it seems like it only happens in politics like people are so staunch uh like republican or whatever party they are that no matter what happens they'll never change their stance which is weird because it doesn't happen with other things and the the analogy that I came up with is like like i really like star wars like and i you know i really like star wars movies i know a lot of people that do but like if they came out with a new Star Wars movie and it was just like real footage of the actors from Star Wars like locking kids in cages and taking them from their families, you know, um, you know, I, I wouldn't like Star Wars anymore. <laughs> I'd be like, you know, I'd be like, yeah, I don't really like that. That was a really bad movie. Like, so are you into Star Wars anymore? No, I don't. I, I used to really like it, but have you seen the new one? It, like, it, it they didn't even do anything with space it was just you know real footage of them putting kids in cages you know and like leaving them there and you know they just set up concentration camps i don't know i just i you know i like uh i like harrison ford but you know i i just i don't know when he 
when he did that in the new movie for real, I just, you know, really, really, really made me not like them anywhere. I feel like I'm done with that franchise. I wouldn't be like, no, well, I still love Star Wars no matter what. I know that the new movie was terrible and they just did horrible things and it had nothing to do with the other ones, but I'm still voting for it. <laughs> or like Hagen does, like, it'd be like, I don't know, or Ben and Jerry's or something like that. Uh, they had like a Ben and Jerry store and I went in and instead of giving me ice cream, they just took away my health care. I'd be like, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to come here anymore. Oh, you, you want to go to Ben and Jerry's? No, I don't. It's, it's weird now. They don't even give you ice cream. They just, they just destroy your life. And they had kids in cages. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of changed. I was on board before, but you know, they don't even sell ice cream anymore. It's just, they do horrible things. You know, we'd be like, yeah, I'm still going there all the time. It's great. They, uh, they said they were going to give me ice cream. They just kept, they kept chanting it, but they just, they don't give it to me anymore. They stopped doing that. But they, uh, but they cut taxes for uh, billionaires. I know, but I'm not a billionaire. Uh, socialist. What? You're socialist because you don't like Ben and Jerry's anymore. This doesn't make any sense anymore or whatever. Um, then I was watching this thing about, you know, the, the whole thing, you know, the cops keep, you know, shooting everyone. I Like every week there's a new shooting where they just shoot, you know, shoot everyone. Not every, they'll shoot a guy on video. I just don't understand. Like, and they, at this point, they know they're being videotaped a lot of times and they just shoot them in the back, shoot people in the back. And it's just like, what are you doing, dude? Like they had to have heard about that. You know, they didn't hear about the other th guys who got in trouble for that. Um, but like the one thing that's amazing is a lot of times these, these cops will kill people. They'll, they'll uh, accidentally kill people, you know, cause they'll like, you know, like Brianna Taylor. I kind of know the story, I guess. They, they, you know, it was like um, no announce warrant where they basically just knocked on the door and broke in and then just start shooting. Because I guess, one, you know, Brianna Taylor's boyfriend or husband had a gun because and he took it out because someone was just knocking on the door, breaking in. They didn't say they were cops. And, you know, and then they just shot him and shot Brianna Taylor and killed her. And it's like, and th then what happens is um, after they accidentally kill these people and it's, it's in this horrible situation, you always hear about like, Yes, they've been demoted to uh, desk duty. <laughs> you know, like, oh wow, what a what a horrible punishment! That's imagine having a job where like you could like accidentally kill people at the job, and then all you do is just get a slight demotion. Like imagine if I like you worked at McDonald's like uh, on the um, on the fryer, and like one day you accidentally killed three people with the fryer, and they were like, "All right, yeah, you know what, man, that you really messed up. You're gonna have to work the shake machine from now on." Like, really? I'd be like, "Wow, really? I, I can still work here?" Yeah, yeah. How did you kill the? I, I thought those people were French fries. I threw them into the fryer. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. I'm. Do I still have a job? Yeah, yeah. You, you can still work here. It's just you have a little less. Um, it's a little worse what you're going to do. Oh, okay, cool. I, I'm, that's amazing that you guys aren't firing me because I accidentally killed people here. Whatever. Yeah, I just feel like most jobs are probably, you know, I've been fired for way less. I've been fired from jobs because I was late like three times. These guys are killing people. <laughs> like, these guys are shooting people in the back or accidentally killing, you know, well, that's not actually, but like, you know, they're doing things where they're like, oh, it was an accident. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that they weren't the person, you know. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> are you gonna fire me no no just take a couple weeks off you know and then like when when people get mad they always seem like um outrage they always seem outraged what the fuck what's your problem uh you murdered everyone uh this guy was just walking down the street and you murdered him yeah sorry man what things happen <laughs> can't believe these guys. They won't let it go. They put me on desk duty. What else do you want? It's really boring there. God. Racist. <laughs> this is another funny thing. People, you know, I'm white, obviously. And, you know, there's a whole thing of everyone's like, you know, I, a lot, you know, with the whole racism thing, like, you know, I want to be, 
I just want to be judged for the content of my character. And, you know, actually being judged for the content of your character, it's kind of overrated because um, I almost wish sometimes I could blame things on racism. But, like, when people don't like me or, like, when I don't get a job or something, it's, like, totally based on me. You know what I mean? Like, I completely fucked it up. I wish I was able to be like, oh, well, they just didn't give it to me because I'm a white guy. They, you know, when people don't give me jobs, they're like, no, no, no I'm, gi- I'm not giving it to you because you're just really, you were really bad. You're not good at, <laughs> you have a horrible resume and we're just not giving it to you. I really don't, you earned not getting this job. You know, it doesn't feel good. Like, you know, hey, I, everything I don't have, I totally earned it. I've earned everything I don't have. None of it was because of anything else but to do with my personality. I have a horrible personality. I don't have a horrible personality, but it's kind of like, it, like I said, it's overrated being, you know, judged for who you are really as a person. Did I get the job? No, no. Why? Because I'm white. No, no. Because we talked to you and uh, we we hated you. You showed up to the interview with uh, shorts on, so we're not going to give it to you. Uh, okay well um, I gotta go I gotta go watch more commercials um, thanks a lot for tuning in uh, rate and review this podcast last exit, exit last exit to Brooklyn and um, uh, we'll see you next time thanks a lot <laughs>